We'll get started in just a minute. So welcome to Missing in Minutes. We'll wait for everybody to get in their seats. We're going to be talking about little Summer Wells who is still missing. We've had no updates other than the authorities are very much still looking for this child. I've done a lot of thinking over this case. I've been working on the Gabby Petito case where her body has been found and now we have the manhunt for Brian Laundry. I think Dirty Laundry is about to be aired out here pretty quick. Um, but that's just my personal view. But I, I really held off on drawing any type of theory together that until the... Uh, this has come into a way that all the details just add up to me. Like, I don't pay attention to what Don says about his past or the relationship with others because I'm focused on that day that Summer went missing. Hey, Skyzy, good morning to you, beautiful. I love your little purple icon. So, yes, this is a live broadcast. You'll hear me interacting at times with the, I call top side, which is chat. All right, you guys, so I'm going to get comfortable. You get comfortable. Can you hear me, good Sky? Let me do a sound check real quick. Yes, she said thank you. Okay, <laughs> we know to do that now. I've had like two videos in the past where like no sound showed up. And then somebody put hoax. They didn't stick around to find out we fixed the sound. I was like, ah, oh, Nan's life. Good morning, beautiful. Good to see ya. So you guys, um, I've really been focused on Summer Wells, even though I was working on the Gabby Petito case, Summer has never left my mind, ever. And I've looked at the timeline, and I've listened to pretty much everything that was ever said. I've disregarded all the past. I, I get that a crime could have happened, and it could be why Summer is truly missing. I get that. But I need to know, for me, when I look at even the outsiders of the family, from Hunter to Allie to the witness on the bicycle to the little TikTok videos to all the items around Summer, the conditions she was living in, and it all added up. The people that they know, the body disappearing or the child disappearing, And it all started adding up. So I'm going to go ahead. And today, this is simply my opinion, speculation, and educated guess, if you will. But my gut tells me. And I also do 11-11 tarot. And believe it or not, Six days before Gabby Petito's body was found out of all of the United States, when her stepdad was just going to Wyoming, just heading there, the card showed me where Gabby was within 21 miles. And I recorded it, and I put it out there six days ahead. So go over to 1111 Tarot if you're interested. You can watch that video and uh, many more, including one, this summer shared with me today. So, hi, David K. Good to see you. As I said, this is a working theory. As information comes up, we have to take an account. So what I'm doing is I'm adding this up. I do believe summer has passed. I do not believe we are looking for a missing child. I believe we are Beyond that, when they bring in cadaver dogs, I start getting the sense that so does FBI and others. But that's just my take. It's in the description down below, Sky Z. It's the first link on there. Hello, Miss Leslie. Good morning to you. So, judge me if you wish. But I ask you. 
everything I'm about to share with you, there's nothing that keeps it from being the truth. And sometimes when my theories come up and there's a hiccup, I'm like, well, maybe that didn't happen. But when this theory comes up and just nothing breaks the theory and I've held on to it basically since the beginning, like my gut told me, but then when I did 11-11 Tarot today, I felt the energies of Gabby. I felt the energies of Summer. And I saw the story play out. And for me, it just makes so much sense that I just can't shake it. And so since you guys are more analytic, and I respect that, you're analytical and want to see facts and all that, I thought about this. Let's come to the middle. Meet me in the middle. You supply the facts. I'll think about the facts. And I'll challenge you by bringing a theory to see if possibly your facts validate the theory. Uh, thank you, Skyzy. So I believe that <clears throat> the day did start off with Summer in bed with her dad. And I think he did go to work. Um, the next thing, I think that they did go to the drugstore. I think they went, took Grandma into the ER. I think Grandma got some possibly medication that could have been for pain relief. Could have been something like a muscle relaxer just some form of medication. I think we're pretty much locked in that the pharmacy was visited and prescription was picked up somewhere around noon. We know before that that Hunter had to have called Candace because he said in his interview that he rang her up. He also said that he dabbed her up now, dabbing someone up is, a, is the words used by those that have gotten concentrated forms of THC in a waxy substance. And that waxy substance can lower your blood pressure extremely quickly if you're exposed to it. it calms a person down. And you smoke it with a little torch and a pipe. I've done my research now. And he clearly says he dapped her up. And then we have Christopher McDonough say and volunteered the information. So, Chris, I'd ask you next time, don't volunteer so much guesswork and assumption. Ask what it is and then let them answer because you do a beautiful job on getting information. But you answered for Hunter. You said, what's dab up, like a knuckle bump? He said, oh, uh, yeah, yeah because he realized you pointed out a mistake. Because Hunter's a kid. He's not thinking. He dabs everyone up. So I think Candace got called by Hunter because of Allie. I think, in my theory, there's some drugs being run around from the Mexico trips that Daddy's making. I think Mommy is running around dropping stuff off. This big squabble goes on prior to this between Allie and Candace. And they're not friends. Truth train coming through. It's like a month and a half later, and Hunter calls Candace. My theory is that Allie says, Hey, Hunter, I'm out of some smoke. Can you hit up Candace and just, uh, See if she knows anything and if she can swing by. And I think that's what was going on. Not everybody likes dabs. Some people will only smoke the natural stuff. Like I said, I've done my research. I know what I'm talking about. The older people don't like those dabs. It's the younger generation, the 20-year-olds. The other ones are more hippie-like, you know. So maybe they were out of, quote, flowers, because flowers is what a lot of marijuana smokers of the original flower, the original green, smoke. 
and they call it flowers. We have flowers later in the case. So I believe that's what was going on, and I do believe that they went swimming. And I believe that Hunter, Grandma, and Candace are all up at the vehicle. I think that Hunter went down there originally with Summer and was watching her play. And I think something caught his attention. He seems very distractible. He probably did go off in the woods. And I bet you Candace saw him go off in the woods and said, Hey, Hunter, you want to come here for a minute? Well, that vehicle is parked quite a ways away. I don't believe Grandma went down there. She's got a bad knee. She's having to wear a brace. It's unlevel ground. And to walk without bending your knee on unlevel ground just doesn't seem like it's logical. Plus, we have Hunter saying Grandma's up at the car, playing on her phone, getting minutes. We have Hunter saying Candace is talking to Grandma. And I'm sure Candace walked down there first, too. Hey, Mom, I'll be right back. I'm going to take Hunter and Summer swimming down here, get them situated. I'll be back up in just a minute to talk to you. So Hunter's down there watching Summer. Mom walks back to check on Grandma, who's working on her phone, who probably needs a little of assistance here and there. They're messing with their phones. Now Hunter's off in the woods. Candace calls him over, and Summer is alone. Now, if you really listen to Chris McDonough, the interview room, that interview with Hunter, Hunter admits he saw Summer under the water, but he doesn't know how long she's been under the water. He has no clue. And I think he doesn't jump right away because I think he's waiting for her head to bob up but he's quite a ways away. So, her head doesn't bob up. Hunter admits that he, ra that he responded, that he had urgency, and that she was underwater. But I don't think Summer just went underwater and drowned because she's only way steep and she's jumping around like a fish but let me tell you something I've hit my head under rock underwater if you jump wrong and you lose your balance and your feet get on top of you and you kick wrong in panic you can slam your head into the ground hard and we have that like V-shaped bruising. Hey, Mom. One moment, no, I'm on a, a live recording, sweetheart. So, I believe that Summer hit her head and was knocked out underwater floating. And I believe that's why she's floating. And I think Hunter runs down, grabs her, and she comes to. But I believe at this point, our sweet little girl has a concussion. Chills are the effect you can get. I've had a serious concussion. I shook with adrenaline even though I wasn't that cold. But I did get cold. I got dizzy and I got tired. I got so tired I couldn't keep my eyes open. And now I'm thinking about how would I sleep on milk? cold gallons of milk let me tell you with a concussion you are out of this world so at this point i don't think anybody realized she was coming in and out of consciousness they just chalked it up to her being tired because it may have been a little bit of a delayed effect. And I believe at this point, Summer's doing kind of back and forth. I think she's hot. 
and then cold. Hot, then cold. Part of a concussion. I think she's confused. And I think she did drink some of the Fanta. Now, interesting enough, I have found out that Fanta is also specifically named in cutting drugs. So you put it in there, you stir it up, and then you drink it gone. So we have drugs in a Fanta bottle, possibly, allegedly, of course, this is theory, speculation, laying by summer. She may have become very thirsty and disorientated. And here's where I think it gets messy. I don't think that Hunter knew that the drugs were in the Fanta. I think Grandma and Mom went in the store. Summer was relaxing with, with Hunter. She's coming in and out, starting to get fuzzy, concussion kicking in with the swelling pleading possibly on the brain, getting confused, and he doesn't know what to do. He thinks she's tired, and he may have given her that Fanta to drink some. That Fanta could be what has kind of like reddened that area under her lips, and she may have even tipped her face, her head drooled down, straight down, and that might be all like Fanta and a little bit of bleeding or something that drips into her lap. Could have been just vomit because you get violently ill if you have a concussion. It's, it's part of the disorientation, the ringing of the ears. And you black out. But I don't think Summer fully blacks out. I think she's in and out, in and out. And then we get home. I think everybody, I think the boys are there. I think there's some flowers going on. If you get my drift, passing a little bowl between Grandma and Candace. And Grandma says, I'm going to go lay down. And Mom says, well, I got to make a quote unquote run. Possibly to deliver some flowers. I'm going to have the boys watch Summer. Boys, where's Summer? She's in the basement, Mom. Playing with her toys. All right, well, I'll be back. I'm going to go on a run. All right. Mm -hmm. At this point, I think Summer had opened the back door and was on her swing. I think the boys came outside. They were all playing in the yard. And maybe they were even running by and giving a push to Summer. But she's disorientated and she has a concussion. I think that they all got down and they went down that little trail that takes them to the creek by the funky shed. Because that's the first place that Daddy goes. I think they started playing hide-and-go-seek, and I don't think Summer felt good. I think she had a concussion. I think that it's possible she went up in that little cotton blind and climbed up in there with her brother to play hide-and-seek. We see now it's rotten, and the whole bottom's collapsed. And we know she likes to jump up and down. And if brother's peeking over the side to see if anybody's seeing, are they finding us? Are they finding us? And I think it collapsed and she fell through. I think it was a perfect storm. She hit that little water. Boys didn't know what to do. They're in a panic. They would have probably went in and moved her body. At this point, I think she's still alive. I think that she's out cold, but she's still alive. I think they go wake up Grandma. And I think, well, let me back that up. I think Candace wakes up Grandma. I think the boys 
had to get Summer back to the house because I don't think they're supposed to be at the creek when nobody's home. And they're worried they're going to get caught because now Summer's hurt. And they got to go all that way back up that hill. And they're just kids. They don't know what they're doing. I think that's why we have some strange bruising on Summer. I think they get her up to the yard. I think Mom gets back and she sees Summer and she screams bloody murder. That or they don't move Summer all the way to the house. They just move Summer there where Daddy goes. That makes more sense. Let's stay there the creek so the boys move summer after she falls out of the blind up along the side out of the water they don't know what to do they have no idea mom drives up the boys meet mom something's happened to summer we don't know she fell through the cotton blind it wasn't a very far out wasn't a very far fall, Mom. I don't know. She goes down there and she lets out the scream that the neighbor hears. And that neighbor comes over and meets her. And they decide to take her to the hospital. First thought is to get her to the hospital. I think Candace and her thought the child was simply knocked out. That there wasn't that big of a deal. They hadn't added it up yet. They simply thought the child got knocked out and should take her to the hospital. So I believe she was alive when she left that property. I believe Candace called Daddy. And I think Daddy said, I'll meet you halfway. I'm faster. I'm quicker. You're shook up. I can get her there. But I think Candace had someone else besides Grandma in the car. I think it's the neighbor. Remember? Don Wells made up that story about how he got there and he was at the creek and he saw his boys all together and he said that's all cotton blind and I saw it fell through and my gut hit like lightning but I didn't know what that meant and then he says and then I saw my neighbor and that's when I knew something was terribly wrong that took me personally back to a place sitting on a couch on an Easter morning in my life with my two little kids and my cousin Chelsea who's five missing her because she had been with me for a while because her mom was having problems but the family demanded that she go back and be with mom I got that call on Easter morning all I know is my mother-in-law picked up the phone Good morning, happy Easter. And then she screamed and dropped the phone. It was a landline. And it laid, that cord dangled, and the phone was swinging. And she kept saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, looking at me. And I'm like, what? What? And I grabbed the phone. I knew that moment there was something very wrong, just like Don Wells did when he was down by that cotton blind that's all tore up. And I heard, she's gone. I said, who is this? Who's gone? Chelsea. Chelsea is dead. I don't remember a lot after that. Um, this was a very dear child to me. And I could feel it when Don said it, even when he relived it, just like you did with me. It happened there. Because emotions come out, and I can read authenticity. Now, it might just be that there's a stump, 
or it might just be that there's a stick but on that cotton on that cotton blind footage where Don Wells reenacts it and then he shows that clear cut I swear to you out in the middle of that clear cut I can see something and it looks like a dark shadowy figure that turns and walks away as if to say I'm leading you here I have reviewed it I've had my boss look at it I've had a lot of people look at it in my life and they all say it looks like a little girl and they don't even know the case so you go check like I said it's probably a stump but in my heart of hearts the way Don responded all the boys are down there the neighbors down there everybody's gathering there intuitions the first thing that you feel and that's the first place that I felt and daddy went there first too everybody's hung up on that bunky shed that's where he later who knows maybe maybe he did I think then the next thing that comes to mind is David Dobbs because he was the first one there couldn't get a hold of Robin but he could he could call Robin he's also a mortician he also would have the ability to cremate and we got Don and mom dad and mom right off the bat past tense can't help it speaking about summer using morbid words such as smothered such as loving her to death that baby's gone but I don't think there's a body because I think David may have had something more to do with the family he's very close to the boys I don't want to throw shade but I'm just saying I think he cremated summer for them I think that's why when the dog handler alerted over what was it 200 places on that property is ashes of summer being spread in the wind like the little candle in the wind that she is the dog led down the driveway to a waiting car is that the neighbor's car I don't know I don't want to throw shade on the neighbor either but I think she knew it was an accident I think she's worried about the family she don't know none of y'all she knows some boys she talked about them boys a lot I don't think she realizes they were living in harsh conditions and she just wants the boys to be protected I think out of the goodness of the heart that the story isn't truly being shared fully I didn't hear a vehicle I saw the tires they didn't move it's just not right the story isn't put together enough for the truth to really be spoken it's partial truth I heard the scream that's what drew him outside I saw the boys crouching I believe Candace she said I heard a vehicle and a car door I heard a scream was Candace coming back from her quote flower run did the boys say mom something happened to summer where 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 down at the creek she fell through the cotton blind we didn't know what to do we got her on the grass I know we're not supposed to be down there we don't know what to do dad always said we all have to go together so we took her with us we couldn't leave her alone y'all get mad and then we have Don Wells saying with tears in his eyes it's hard for a man to produce tears I'm telling you 
regardless of what he's done in his past, that moment is what I'm talking about. And he said, I would gladly take the fall for summer. And where did daddy go first? To the cotton blind, down to the creek, where the boys were waiting. And Summer was cremated because every time I pull cards, she shows me every single time she's on the mountain. The white horse, look it up. It's heroin. It's coke. It's cut with things. Like Fanta. You're all woozy. You don't know what you're doing. Concussion. And possibly impalement. If a sliver of that rotten cotton blind impaled this child, it could explain why it's not massive bleeding, but leaking. Because almost everyone knows you would leave that sliver, that chunk of wood, so that the person doesn't bleed out. And did they meet at that old cemetery where Don's mom lived? Is that where first Dobbs really comes to the property, if you will? Because I get Aunt Rose telling me, Ring around the rosy ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Pocket full of posy. Posy is drugs. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Summer's been singing that song in my head for a week or two now. You may not believe in spirituality, but this child, I believe, was impaled on the cotton blind. I believe the boys were home with her alone. Grandma was sleeping. I believe Grandma did hear Candace scream bloody murder. But I don't think that basement had a damn thing to do with it. She had a fall, all right. She was showing me the fall early on in the game. But I believe she fell right there where Daddy went to. That's why Dad makes a story about him. He don't know how to look for Summer. He knows where she is. That's why he gets mad when you say he sold her. His emotions tell tell. Candace, he can't tell where she is, but she said, all drugged up in that interview on the Sermon on the Mount as it's known by, they would have never done her that way if I would have been there. Ever. Because she wasn't there. Dispatch said, the mother went on a run. Then we get the telephone game, literally. And the dispatcher says, the mother says she went on a walk. The mother went on a walk. And perception got changed. But that isn't what was reported. The mother went on a run. Now, we have two stories from Candace. First, she tells the story that the boys were home. They unloaded groceries. Then she switches up. Chris McDonald's standing in the driveway with her and said, who was home when you got that day? She said, no, no one was home. No one. Because we have two different moments in the same day. She gets home with Summer who has a concussion. Here we go. The boys are home. They unload the milk. They unload Summer. She's all like, woo. Boys, keep an eye on Summer, Okay. I'll be back. Second time, she comes back. No one's home. The boys are down at the creek. And so summer. That's when the neighbor heard the car door. But no engine. Then she hears the scream. Somewhere around 420. How ironic. That gives Dawn plenty of time. To beat the cops there. Because he drove so fast. You know why he drove so fast? 
because there was a serious accident. And he came home. He picked that baby up out of that field. And he took that baby and met Dobbs halfway. And they cremated that baby and they took her ashes and they did their own ceremony because he's going to see that baby in the resurrection. That's why Grandma left. She knew what happened. She knew exactly what happened. She was of no good there. And she wasn't going to spill the beans because Daddy was protecting the boys. Him won't lose his boys. Now, y'all may hate that man, but I'm going to tell you something. When he was sitting in that church, and Candace was the one sleeping, he had no idea a soul was watching him on camera. He had no one to impress. Summer was alive and well. He was dressed decent. He was studying what the Word of God was. I'm telling you, he hurt when that baby left. Because he said, when I got there, went past the funky shed, we turned here. We turned here. Is it Dobbs? Does he have church boy with him? Was he told to pick up David? I don't know. David lives very close, I was told. And come directly to the funky shed. He gets out of the car. We're about 5.30, just like he originally said. They haven't called nobody. He sees his boys. They're all together, just like he told them to, because they're not allowed to come down here by themselves, because it's dangerous. Then he saw his neighbor, his sick neighbor, who's way out in the middle of this cotton blind area. And like he said, he knew something was very, very wrong. And that's when they skedaddled and they got her out of there. And then she's cremated. We're missing from 4.30 to about 6.30, two hours. So I believe this incident happened around 4. And I believe they covered it up immediately with the adduction theory because Summer wasn't at the house, so the dogs would lead them away. And if she was alive still and breathing when they took her, she was put in somebody's car at the end of the driveway and passed away on the, on the ride. All right, you guys. May Summer rest in peace. I do believe she's gone. It's just a theory. It's one I've walked a million times. And I'm going to come over to Topside and we're going to get together on this. Come out of my little storytelling mode. Ugh. I think that's why the dogs were alerting in hundreds and hundreds of places. I do believe that Summer was cremated and they were worried that the parents were worried. Dawn said that she'd be trapped somehow locked away where she couldn't run and play and be free. I think their ashes, her ashes, are spread all over that mountain. I keep getting that carousel of that ferris wheel where Dad is up there with the boys. And you can see Summer running up to the ferris wheel every time they swoop down and Dad points I can see our mountain from here, boys. They treasured the mountain. All right, I'm coming over. Sorry, I 
I took so long. I'm going to try to to come up and um, you know what? I'm going to give a moment of silence. I need a moment, to be honest. Um, it's, it's just I don't want to come in and be all teary-eyed. I want to be able to say, okay, let's jump off the theory. But to me, it's it's a moment of grieving because I just need it. So I'm going to do that. Um, I don't want to end the live because I want to share your side of things. I just need to go breathe. And um, then we can dig into questions. You guys can tell me how silly I am if you want. Tell me that um, this is all just in my head, if you will. I'll be back soon. Just give, in, just give me three minutes. I also want to check on Noah, see what my son wants. mic so I don't know if the speaker on the computer still works or not it's old as hell so as soon as I find out if we have sound we can dig into this now I heard someone say this was a lot of speculation speculation um that's why we call it a theory that's what we do here in true crime we kick theories um around until they hold water, no pun intended. So, anybody let me know if we have sound again? I think we do. 
Let me look on my little register and see what it says. Well, it's showing I got sounds, so hopefully I do. Everybody got kind of quiet because I wasn't reading anything of topside. I just wanted to get the theory out there. I had to kind of close my eyes and walk it. We got 33 uh, right now. Playback's at 235. Let's see where we are. Yes, Skyzy, I did hear the neighbors speak. Hey, David K. Welcome again. Thank you, Nan's Life, for sharing that. That's a link to the other channel. That was quite interesting, too. That's right now, that's more focused on um, the new release of Summer, where the cards show a lot of what I'm saying. Hello, Emma Austin. Ah, she says, lovely to hear me. Thank you, sweetheart. Good to hear from you, too. Emily Hotch, is it Hotchin? Says, finally, I caught alive. Good to see you, too. Uh, hey, Jess Marie. Jess Marie in the house. Good to see you. Judah DePout, how you doing? Says, I just wish they would arrest Candace, Dawn, and Grandma on child abuse charges. I feel that once they're in jail, they will turn on each other. Period which would lead to where Summer is. Very possible. I feel like so many times they're holding off on arresting someone because they don't have enough to make it stick and they don't want to mess it up. But at the same time, like now look what happened to Brian Laundrie. Out on the run, right? We're wasting millions of dollars. I mean, honestly, would his lawsuit have added up to that much if he was wrongfully arrested and then released? Just for questioning? Come on. Emma Austin says, yeah, dab. He became flustered when Chris Madonna asked him about that. Sky Z says, I still can't believe that went over my head. Great catch. I add it right to my bowl instead of using a torch on top of the weed, but I'm 42, not 15. True, true dad. All right, we've got Mrs. Leslie E. Welcome to the channel says, I can't imagine a child being able to tolerate dabbing. It would choke her to death. It's very harsh. Yeah, I, did, I, I didn't mean that Summer dabbed. I meant that Candace dabbed. Just so you guys know, I'm pretty sure that was their greeting call. Their knuckle bump was actually dabbing, which was probably Allie not sleeping in the back. Allie probably with Candace and and. Hunter, we're all dabbing it up. Jessie Marie says, Nice, Sky Z. I can't dab anymore. Too much for me. Judah Tapout um, says, There's a video that I think Private Veritas, V E R I T A S, Veritas, Private Veritas, did on the American side of our border and the drug children that are being smuggled. Oh my God. Just about goes on to say these kids, they were showing on the video, reminded me of summer against the milk jugs. Good Lord. We've got to quit burying our head though. I've got to stay strong. and We've got to talk about this kind of stuff because it's real. Emma Austin says, funny how Grandis and the ex-neighbor Jody Sue both mentioned tending to their flowers. Yeah, because it means they're getting high. They're smoking marijuana. The green shit. Smoking pot. That's what it means. They're tending to their flowers. And I'm sure if Candace, if Candace is running, which is what is called, I'm going to make a run, that's to drop drugs usually. Drop off weed or whatever. Neighbor seems like she's into 420 as well. And it could be because of her cancer. No shade on her. I believe it should be legalized. I believe it's a lot healthier than opiates that can get in tainted drinks and cause harm. So. Emma 
Emma points out. A child can drown in an inch of water, especially if they've fallen slipped or knocked out. Even if she didn't slip when she was swimming, did she go down to that cotton blind, fall through, hit her head, get knocked out? Boys are running around like crazy, find her drowned? Maybe it wasn't dry drowning. Maybe it was drowning face down, knocked out, because she fell through the cotton blind trying to play hide and seek. Just about says horrible. Didn't them kids remind you of Summer, though, the way they looked and acted in that video? Sky Z points out, or a skull fracture, maybe. Jessie Marie says Summer is a strong little tomboy girl. Just about says, I think they even said what they gave the kids in the video to sedate them, sedate them like that. I wish I could find the link to the video I've been looking so everybody could see it. It's eye-opening. Just so you know, you're going to have to put your video link in the description after the live, love, because it won't link while we're on live a YouTube special feature that isn't allowed. Or if you do put it on there, and I maybe as a mod, Nan, or if Becca Chua shows up, she might. Um, she may have something going on. But if one of the mods see the link, go ahead and post that link so we can see it. She went to look for it. Okay. Sky Z says, oh my God, with a little frowny face. Jess says, did anyone see the first interview when Don and the oldest boy were standing? I always got before I knew anything was. Basement accident brother. I don't know. It was just my first thought. Well, and, you know, take this theory and go that other route. Maybe they didn't go down there. I just said this theory because of Don's reaction at that place. It was so truthful. It was authentic. That's when he knew something was very, very wrong. And Candace saying, I got back and no, no one was there. No one was there. You're right, Jess. Alcohol would make her sleepy. Alicat says, boy, there's a lot of speculation here. I know, Alicat, that's what we do here. And that's why, in the title, I say theory. Coming through. We're here to express ourselves, so it's a work in progress, if you will. 266 playbacks. We have 33 concurrent views. <laughs> Sky Z says, hi, Alicat. Puts a little heart. That's what we do in true crime, true crime communities. Speculate. What are the facts? Because the news doesn't give us them, and the parents don't either. I agree. Sky Z says, I'm going to listen to this while I cook. What are you cooking, Sky Z? I'm hungry. You smell what I'm cooking? <laughs> Suzanne says, oh, some are so, so sad. Emma Austin says, yes. What? Which neighbor? Don says when he was by the cotton blind, Emma that he saw his boys all together. He looked over, he saw his neighbor, and that's when he knew something was very, very wrong. Then we have the neighbor's account. And she says, I looked over at the boys who were all crouching together. She had heard the scream now, remember? Uh-huh. I agree, Emma, it is heartbreaking. Just about says, you guys, I found the link. It took forever, so I'll put it below. Hopefully, it'll be an active link, but you might have to type it out on your own. We'll see if we see the link. We'll share it. Emma says, have they had cadaver dogs on the property? Yes, and the dogs hit in over 200 places, Emma, on that property. That's why I felt like it added up to, like, ashes being spread of the And we have a mortician admittedly the first outsider to respond which happens to be church david who then takes the boys on an outing to miniature golf he's very involved all of a sudden isn't he just about says this video shows on the u.s side of our mexican border traffickers with five-year-old under five-year-old and under drug children that are being sold these kids remind me of the way they act and look up summer against the milk jugs. Emma points out a perfect point. 
Hats off. Gold star today for Emma Austin. Done her equals cremated. Cremated. It's done. Cremated. That might have been after the fact. Not while they're... It's done. Cremated. Candace would have had her phone back too. It's done. Cremated. Oh my God. Hey, how you doing, Vandiga? I'm glad you made it to a live. Good to see you, lovely. Emma Austin, do you think that the boys have been asked more questions now that they've been removed from the home? I do. I do. I don't know if the boys will talk because they don't want to get the other boy in trouble and Summer's really gone. And they may have been told that, you know, manipulated that they would they would be, you know, held accountable, be prosecuted. Heather. You're welcome, Emma. I think I'm almost caught up. Everybody hears me. That's good. Skyzy, I love speculating. Hey, Teresa. Yeah. Well, what kind of cued me up is when I had found out that, and I do, like I said, I do feel Gabby Petito is with Summer, and they're trying to communicate. They're, like, strengthening to communicate. And I know if you are just analytically formatted that that's not going to agree with you but if you're spiritual you'll understand what I'm saying and when I was doing the report where they had actually found Gabby's body I accidentally put cremated when I don't feel that at all about Gabby and then I was thinking about 200 over 200 hits by the cadaver dog on that property just in random locations where nothing was there and it made me wonder Somebody's cremated, we know. Bones and cremation still can cause a dog to react. And it wouldn't disperse easily. So weird, I just said dispersed, talking about summer, ashes, and Gabby, Petito, being found at Spread Creek, dispersed campground. How intriguing. Teresa says, Don seems very confident they're in the clear. Well, if she was cremated, they're not going to find a body, are they? Or bones. They're going to find dust to dust and ashes to ashes. I'm sure that they just did the dust in the air. Any bones left from the cremation, the chunks of it, probably went to be buried up north with Grandma to where possibly she went first to Wisconsin and then to Illinois. Illinois, because I believe Rose Bly is buried on property up in Wisconsin. Probably laid some of the ashes to rest there, the bones, the majority of it. Teresa says, I don't know, they're not criminal masterminds, but sending summer often is very possible. Maybe she was overly sedated. I think it was accidental. I mean, they're no masterminds, and I don't think they realized Summer was going to get sedated. That's just my opinion. Teresa says, you'd think they would would have found Summer by now unless it's cremation. Cremains. I agree. Sky Z says, I'm wondering if they forced Summer to get high since, according to each sister, they let the nine-year-old. I doubt it. I doubt it. I really don't. I think they gave her chewables instead. Instead of a child that young isn't going to be able to smoke, they probably gave her chewables from the hippie house or some other place that probably kept her from being hyper because she was probably pestering the adults a lot and so forth in their mind. Me either, Teresa. I don't believe they sold her either. You made fried eggs. 
Ah, I would love an old-fashioned southern fried egg sandwich. Good golly, that sounds great. Good golly, Miss Molly, throw some bacon on that, right? I'm starving. Like, I've been working so much on the channels because I just feel like this is a time where we need to bring some closure to some of this. The Stephen Avery case pushed me really hard into true crime. I had no interest in it before, and it led me into trying to find these missing people, and it gave me a lot of education in how the legal system works. And is it possible the parents truly feared that not only were they going to get prosecuted, is it possible that the oldest boy was old enough legally to babysit and could possibly be held responsible for negligence? I don't know. Maybe they were protecting the boys. Teresa agrees. Summer and Gabby are together. I felt it today over on 11 Lemon Tarot so strong I can't even tell you. If you're interested in understanding where even the cards point stuff out on this, I was given the story, you know. Through the cards, through understanding spiritually, and then knowing the analytical side and following my hunches, like a good detective would do. They follow those gut reactions. Something told me to look here. I don't know, it was just a hunch. My gut told me, you know. We're a little over an hour here, so we're going to be closing this off. I just wanted to say thank you for everybody. Um... You're right, Teresa. She may have gotten candy from Grandma. Teresa says, R.D., we both live in Wisconsin. I had never heard about Rose until this case. Did you hear about it 10 years ago? I did. I saw the drawings, but you know what? I kept my eye open for somebody that looked like that. Never saw him. Never thought about it. Thought maybe a truck driver got her or something. Never really dug into the case at all. Was quite shocked when I found out summer wells case connected right back up to wisconsin i was like are you serious and then i thought about how chelsea rose my five-year-old cousin that i had taken a lot of care of how she got swept down by the creek and somebody said well you couldn't drown in a creek and yet my cousin had and i was like you could if you get knocked out and then I saw that cotton blind, and it all made sense. And I went and did the reading, and the card showed it. And I was like, wow. This very well could have been what happened. I mean, what are we left with? Nothing but speculation and lies from the parents. So it's all about our perception, right? Do your own research. Draw your own conclusions. I always encourage that. Do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's keep getting Summer's information out there. Keep her face very well seen in light of all the floods of Brian Laundry. I think Summer's face should be out there more. So, I love you guys. Leave your DNA on the like button. Thank you. Hats off to Nan. I love you so much for doing this. Bless your heart. You always show up. And it means the world to me and everybody. And um, you do a brilliant job with that wrench. Yeah. All right. For the rest of you, I love you to the moon and back. And God bless you all. And let's find summer and justice for Gabby. Love you to the moon and back.